This graph from last December shows the proportion of people who had COVID antibodies, either from prior infection, vaccination, or both, based on blood donor surveys. As you can see, about 94% of people 16 and older had some protection against COVID. But around the same time, at the end of December, there was a huge spike going into the new year. And that data hints at why reinfections will become a part of our new normal. So how is it that so many people had protection against COVID, but still somehow managed to get infected? Recent estimates suggest that somewhere between 10 and 15% of the cases we're seeing are actually reinfections. And some experts think that figure will continue to climb. The rates of breakthrough infections, which happen after vaccination, have also increased. There are two main reasons for that. First, as we've learned from our ongoing COVID coverage, antibodies wane with time. The lower your antibody levels are, the less protected you tend to be. If we look closely at the first chart that I showed you, it says that nearly everyone 16 and over in the US had antibodies, but it doesn't specify at what level. The second reason we're likely to continue to see reinfections is that our antibodies don't adapt as quickly as the virus does. So over time, the virus becomes better at evading the antibodies we have worked so hard to build up. That's what happened with Omicron. The surge in cases, which you can see in this graph, coincided with the arrival of the variant. The antibodies we had weren't as good at recognizing the virus, so the chance of reinfection was higher, as this study showed. That's why we kept hearing so much about this. Omicron variant has shown a surprising ability to break through our defenses. Some are wondering if people can get reinfected. Research from earlier this year showed that boosters increased antibody levels, and that helped with protection against Omicron. Why? Well, it's a numbers game. Even if antibodies become less effective, it's not like they lose the capacity to block the virus from infecting your cells altogether. So having more can balance out some of that loss in effectiveness. To further counteract that loss, companies are also working to tailor their vaccines to more recent variants or even to multiple ones. But for now, how often we'll need boosters is still TBD. We went over a lot of this in our booster video. So if you're interested in learning more, check that out. Public health experts say that for the foreseeable future, boosters will be critical for keeping up our immunity against COVID at a population level. What happens at a population level is also really important for what happens to you. The higher the rates of COVID cases, the more virus you'll encounter. And that means that in high density cities like New York, where people are crowded together in small spaces, the likelihood of getting infected is much higher, especially if your antibodies are declining. The good news? Chances are that if you got COVID after getting vaccinated, your case will be on the milder side. Data from Washington State in May, for instance, showed that 12 to 34 year olds who were unvaccinated were four times more likely to end up in the hospital than people who were vaccinated. By keeping people out of the hospital and from dying, public health experts say that the vaccines are still giving us a leg up against the virus. And it's that chaos of mass hospitalizations that contributed heavily to the disruptions we all experienced early on in the pandemic. The CDC recently estimated that about 60% of people have had COVID. As more people get exposed and vaccinated, COVID will become less disruptive because our immune system would have learned to recognize it and attack it. And we're actually already starting to see that happen. As Omicron cases spike again, there seems to be limited impact so far, at least here in the US. We've covered COVID a lot, and it has been a really long journey. But I'm happy to say that we're no longer defenseless against COVID. We've built up some level of immunity, so even if reinfections become more common, it's unlikely to be all doom and gloom from here on out. That gives us signs of hope that the worst is behind us. 